Have you ever wanted to be able to hold the physical embodiment of chaos and destruction in your own hands? To be able to let loose a symphony of carnage and mayhem with no regard for the safety of yourself or your allies? Well then do I have an offer for you with the Gunner's Hurricane Rocket Pod. What's up guys, Jay here and welcome back to the channel. The time has finally come for us to finish talking about the primary weapons for each of the classes in our weapon guide series. If you are unfamiliar, here we go through each of the weapons the classes have and talk about the basic premise of how they work and function before going into the overclocks these weapons have so you can see if you want to add it to your build. There is a full playlist of all of these weapon guides linked below so you can see the one that I have done covering your favorite weapon. Today we have the last but certainly not least of the primary class weapons with the gunner's high explosive powerhouse, the Hurricane cane guided rocket pod. So if you guys are ready, let's talk about the rocket pod and the kinds of tricks and quirks it has that make it the best gunner primary weapon. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you never miss another upload. So what if I like really big gun? So the rocket pod is definitely the weapon in the gunner's arsenal that turns the most heads from other classes. Personally, I remember when they announced this weapon all the way back in season one, and honestly, it was the weapon that made me start using the gunner more often. The hurricane guided rocket system is the third primary weapon for the gunner, so you will need to put some time into him before you acquire it. It is a portable missile silo with tracking software, allowing for its missiles to be manually guided. The most notable feature with this weapon is its ability to guide the missiles to wherever the crosshair is aiming. This tracking feature is applied to all missiles that are fired and cannot be disabled except for the use of certain overclocks, although unequipping the weapon will cause any in-flight missiles to lose their guidance. The guidance of these missiles can be reacquired by swapping back to the weapon while they remain in flight, although I can't see too many opportunities or reasons why you would want to do something like this. Now, the rockets also have a maximum amount of time the guidance system will work for. Also, only a certain number of rockets can have the guidance system applied to them at once, so if you fire too many, the oldest ones fired will lose their tracking. However, you will rarely be in a situation where that comes into play because you will be spitting out rockets so fast and they go so fast through the air that you will be hitting things more often than not. Just show me what I shoot! Now that that's out of the way, it's time to go over the overclocks themselves. As of Season 4, the Rocket Pod has 7 overclocks, with 2 clean, 2 balanced, and 3 unstable. Next, as always, we'll go through each of them and talk about what they do, and what kinds of ways that you can utilize them to their full effectiveness. So with that, let's start with the clean overclocks, and the first one on the list is Overtuned Feed Mechanism. The description reads, With some slight tinkering, both your weapon and projectiles are faster. So this simple overclock basically gives the weapon more overall velocity. Going over the numbers, it gives you plus one to your rate of fire stat and increases the projectile velocity by 20%. So this overclock is pretty basic and simply gives you a little bit better damage output in the form of shooting faster and the rockets hitting their targets faster. There isn't really a whole lot to say about this one and of course it's a very safe performance enhancing overclock. The next clean overclock we have is Fragmentation Missiles. This one reads, With a thicker casing, your missiles spread more fragments at higher speeds, increasing AoE efficiency. So this is another very simple overclock that essentially gives the weapon a slightly bigger effect radius and more area damage. To be specific, it gives you plus 2 to your area damage and increases the effect radius by 0.5 meters. Now this is another weapon that shockingly does not have any kind of ammo efficiency clean overclock. Instead, we have another damage increasing overclock, but this time in the form of increasing the area of effect and explosive zone of the rockets. This is another safe option to run for more damage and is more suited for maximizing the power of the explosive effects and AoE control. Moving over to the balanced overclocks, first we have the Plasma Burster Missiles. This one reads, Turn the battlefield into a plasma apocalypse with these penetrating multi-burst missiles. They fly slower, don't hit as hard, and there's a limit to how many can be controlled at one time, but in the right hands, even a single missile can do a lot of damage. So this one is rather complicated to talk about, and if you don't believe me, just look at how the wiki tries to explain this overclock with all its damage numbers, and try not to get a headache. But I'll try to simplify it as best I can. First, going through the normal numbers, it adds the Plasma Burst Missile buff and increases the missile's turning rate by 30%. Compensate, it lowers damage output by 8, area damage by 10, maximum ammo by 108, projectile velocity by 25%, and lastly, effect radius by 0.7 meters. So to try to explain how the plasma burst missiles work a little bit better, essentially how they work is these missiles fired have the ability to pierce enemies and hit them multiple times by wrapping around and hitting them again and again. It allows the projectiles to almost swarm the target and each missile does progressively less damage the more time it hits the same target. Eventually the missiles will disappear and will also disappear if there are too many out being controlled at once. 
The rockets do less damage than normal, but you can have multiple rockets repeatedly hitting the same target at once. Now this actually makes this overclock very good at dealing weak spot damage and making progressive damage on the same target for a long period of time. Personally, I have found this overclock to be very useful for taking out big and tough targets like Dreadnoughts, so I tend to take it on elimination missions a lot. That being said, for swarms, it's not particularly that effective. Basically, if you want this thing to be used for big game hunting, then it'll do wonders for you. Do you like the Elton John song Rocket Man? I don't like soft ass. Oh. Well, I only bring it up because uh, it's you. You're the Rocket Man. The second balanced overclock option we have is the Mind Slayer system. The description reads, when your missiles hit the ground, they are planted as mines that explode when damaged or if an enemy is in close proximity. Keep in mind that these new warheads do not have guidance. The total ammo capacity is also reduced. So this overclock turns your missiles into deployable mines that attach to the ground. Going through the stats, it adds the Mine Slayer system buff. This comes at the cost of minus 36 to your maximum ammo reserves and the removal of the tracking for fire projectiles, basically meaning that they go exactly where you aim and can't be guided after that. The silver clock has a very interesting effect on the hurricane. It allows you to be able to place traps for the bugs to cross and trigger so that it can be played quite defensively compared to its normal aggressive playstyle. However, if you fire directly at an enemy, then the mine explodes on impact and can actually increase the damage by a good amount. The hardest thing about this overclock is the removal of the tracking system, so adapting might take some time as you need to learn how to lead your shots a little bit better. If you can adapt, however, then this overclock can be used extremely well both defensively and offensively. Now it's time to go over the unstable overclocks, and the first one for the rocket pod is the Rocket Barrage. The description reads, unleash a torrent of small, unguided rockets. What they lack in sophistication and explosive power is more than made up for in the sheer volume and rate of fire. So this overclock turns the rocket pod into a rocket minigun, essentially. It makes the hurricane spew out rockets faster than a scout zipping to the drop pod and leaving his teammates behind. Going through the numbers, it adds plus 6 to your rate of fire and plus 216 to your maximum ammo reserves. However, this comes at the cost of minus 8 to your direct damage and minus 9 to your area damage. So people seem to have a very split perspective on this overclock. Most people either love it or hate it. Personally, I love using this thing as it is just incredibly satisfying to just unload onto enemies. It is so much fun. Now, unfortunately, while it is incredibly fun to use, the damage output is rather lacking. So unless there's some kind of a big damage buff coming down the line, I would say that there are probably better things to use at the higher end level of play. But still, if you like just spewing out rockets insanely fast and just letting loose a symphony of destruction, then this is definitely the overclock for you. The next unstable overclock option is Jet Fuel Homebrew. The description reads, Grandpa's Recipe, highly unstable and heavy, but works like a charm. Your missiles get a much higher top speed and reach it instantly. The extra energy greatly improves direct damage, but all that extra fuel reduces the missile payload capacity. Due to the extra weight, both magazine and total ammo capacities are also reduced. So I don't know who Grandpa is supposed to be, but man is his recipe effective and I need to find him immediately. Going over the numbers, it gives you plus 24 to your direct damage and plus 50% to the projectile velocity, as well as the instant acceleration buff. This comes, however, at the cost of minus 10 to your area damage, minus 9 to your magazine size, minus 72 to your maximum ammo reserves, and minus 0.5 meters to your effect radius. So essentially, the instant acceleration buff makes it so that way the rockets don't need any travel time to reach their maximum velocity. Normally, the rockets progressively get faster and faster the longer they're in the air, but this one makes it so that way they reach their top speed instantly when fired. This overclock is great if you are focusing more on direct damage rather than area explosive damage, focusing on single targets similar to the plasma burster missiles we looked at earlier, but a little bit more direct and less nuanced. This honestly is a relatively safe option to run no matter what and can almost be viewed as a clean overclock because despite you losing a lot of ammunition, it really doesn't have too many drawbacks. Still, it's a very effective overclock and can definitely do major damage to anything caught in front of it. The final unstable overclock option we have is Salvo Module. This one reads, enables your weapon to load up to nine missiles and launch them at once. As an added bonus, the overloaded exhaust ports increase missile velocity and boost damage based on how many missiles are in the salvo. However, the missiles in the salvo cannot be guided. So this overclock is extremely similar to the sludge blast on the driller sludge pump, giving the rocket pod the ability to store up to nine rockets and fire them together in a single salvo like a shotgun blast, although a very explosive shotgun blast. 
Going through the numbers, it doesn't actually change any of the stats on the gun itself. However, the overclock adds extra damage to the salvo for each rocket loaded. However, those rockets, of course, don't have any guidance. So this overclock can be very useful for dealing heavy burst damage and can also be difficult to use in terms of ammo management. One interesting thing to point out is if you want to use this overclock, it doesn't necessarily change many things about the weapon itself normally. If you want to fire the weapon normally, all you have to do is tap the trigger or the fire button instead of holding it down, which will allow the gun to shoot normally. However, you will be doing it at a much slower rate of fire. You don't want to rely on the salvo blast too much because you will run out of ammo insanely fast. So just make sure that you're careful with this one, and if you are, then it can be extremely fun. It can be good at swarm clearing and heavy single target damage. Time to turn some aliens into thin grain pace! So with all these overclocks a bit more explained, hopefully you have a better idea of how to use the rocket pod much better. This weapon can be extremely powerful and admittedly at times a little clunky to use, but it still has some extreme power if you're able to get around it. You can be simple with the fragmentation missiles and make everything go boom bigger, go fancy with the Mind Slayer system to play a little bit defensively, or go whole hog with the salvo module and let loose a barrage of missiles. Whatever way you go about it, there are plenty of ways that the rocket pod proves that it is the best gunner primary weapon. Well, that covers the rocket pod and the overclocks it has access to and how you can use them to great effect. Now you can decide if it's the right primary weapon to add to your build. If you guys like this and want to see more, make sure you check out the playlist with all the weapon guides so you can see the ones that I've done covering your favorite weapon. And thank you guys again for getting through this with me on all the primary weapons. And now it's time to go to the secondary weapons. So which one will I pick first? Let me know down below what you guys want to see first covered in the secondary weapons guide. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Please be sure to give it a like because it tells me what types of videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.